G'day everyone, it's that time of year again. Yep, Advent Calendar of Circuits once more. So many of you uh, asked me quite nicely, and some not so nicely, to uh, to do this again this year. It's going to be uh, a little bit challenging because work is quite busy at the moment, but I will do my best to fit in uh, as much as I can, and hopefully get out 24 different projects in the next 24 days. So, let's start with something simple. High voltage probe. So many of the projects that I was thinking about doing this time around involve moderately high voltages. Uh, a couple of hundred volts you can easily measure with a, a you know a normal digital multimeter, but when you start getting up into a couple of kilovolts, it's handy to have some kind of high voltage probe. And it's an interesting and fairly simple exercise to design one, at least for DC. An AC one is a bit more complicated, and we might talk about that in another day. So, basic voltage divider. You have some voltage you want to divide down to something you can measure reasonably or plug into your source scope or whatever. It will be quite straightforward except you've also got to take into account the input impedance of your multimeter. For a typical multimeter like my junky one here is about uh, 10 mega ohms. So whatever resistance we use in the bottom half of the, the voltage divider has is also shunted by the input impedance of the meter and you just have to take that into account. So you can First of all, you could just consider this as one resistance. So you want to work out how much resistance the bottom half of your voltage divider is. So I want a 1,000 to 1 to voltage ratio, division ratio. And you plug in the numbers and you get that this combination here should be about, you know, one, if this is 100 mega ohms, which is, I chose arbitrarily because I soldered 10, 10 mega ohm resistors together to give me a reasonable, you know, reasonable flash over voltage for the the resistor chain, although you can use one of those big uh, high voltage resistors or you can solder up a, a bunch of smaller resistors. I actually built one, there's one on my website, uh, I'll put the link in the description, that used um, 20 10 mega ohm resistors and that was for, you know, a bit higher of, vo of a voltage. Okay, so you get your 100.1k resistance here and so what should the, the bare bottom resistor be? Well, you can just use your normal resistors in parallel formula and you solve it and you get about 100.11111, you know, etc. Okay. The easiest way to set the division ratio to exactly what you want is to just put a pot in here and adjust it. Now, I used 5% resistors, so when I went and measured the division ratio just with a, well, like a 30 volt, set my power supply at 30 volts, measured um, the output voltage with my multimeter and adjusted this pot until I got 30 millivolts. Pretty straightforward. Don't know how accurate the multimeter actually was down there. So I replaced that with a fixed resistor and it turned out that it was only um, like two, three hundred ohms because of the errors in the entire voltage divider. If you use one percent resistors it'll probably work a lot better. I just used whatever I had laying around. So the actual construction was it's fairly short and simple. You can see all the 10 meg resistors there, that's a normal plastic soda straw. I've soldered a, um, you know, a 1.1 uh, 1 .1 inch header, 0.1, uh, what is it, 100 mil header pin to the front. I put a uh, finger guard there which I just laser cut some circles on of acrylic. And I terminated into a, uh, a 0.1 header with three wires, one of which is the ground return. So this is the ground return. And the other ones go off to my multimeter at the moment. I'm just plugging it in there. You should probably be a bit more careful about this termination here because if it does flash over inside, you could get zapped here if you don't have decent insulation. Now, I'm only planning on using this for a few kilovolt. The individual resistors, if you do the math, work out at about 1.5 kilovolt for their power dissipation, but there's no way that they're rated to that voltage. So I'm thinking a couple of hundred volts per resistor. There's 10 resistors there, so let's say 3 kilovolt, maybe. You could probably get 5 if you were lucky out of it with before it flashed over. You could also pot the entire chain, or you could just use bigger resistors that are actual high voltage resistors. For our purposes, we're probably not going to want to use, you know, many tens of thousands of volts, so this is just fine. Okay, in the bench vise here, I have a backlight inverter power supply. It's uh, sort of a... actually the circuit's kind of complicated, it's got a whole bunch of protection which I disabled so it would actually just output you know, a high frequency, um, high voltage output. The transformer's kind of interesting, it's kind of 
built like a mini Tesla coil. At the bottom there is a couple turns and at the top there's a whole bunch of bank wound, um, much finer wire and the, the drive circuit is, uh, well there's a couple of different models, like there's much larger ones, you find them all, all over the place in dead monitors or you can buy them um, actually on Amazon. I bought this one on Amazon for about four dollars as a replacement part because it just happened to be one that was easy to hack. Alrighty, so this particular rectifier is not much good actually at this frequency because the output frequency of this is quite high. So this was just a quick hack to generate a couple hundred volts such that I could measure something. Could just as easily have you know used the mains or you know, maybe that other high voltage power supply that you've seen in some of my other videos that I use for uh, Marx generators etc. Anyway, let's turn it on. So about 325, 324 volts across those capacitors. There's quite a lot of uh, high frequency hash here that, and this probe has frequency response problems which we'll talk about later because making a, a high frequency compensated high voltage probe is actually a little bit complicated. Anyway, that's a subject for another video. So, super simple one for the first episode. Um, by all means, in the comments, uh, tell me what you'd like me to work on you know, in the next uh, 24, 23 days. We've got a lot of projects and I've got a, a fair few ideas, but there's uh, plenty of opportunity for me to do things that you might be interested in seeing as well. I know I've had some people ask me to do um, more radio frequency projects this year. I've also had some people ask me to do microcontroller stuff. Some of those things are a little bit non-trivial to get over and done with in just one, you know, one video and I only get probably a few hours per day to, to hack on each particular um, subject. But we'll see what we can fit in and that which doesn't become an advent calendar episode will probably become something else in the future, who knows. Alrighty, that's it for now. Um, as far as uh, writing things up etc. Well, <laughs> last time that didn't really happen so I'm definitely not going to promise it this time but if any of these projects um, take your fancy or you need extra help getting something to work feel free to email me or ask in the comments. I read all the comments and I will get back to you. Alrighty, next time. Bye!